This is the Grow Business Podcast with Corey Mosley. I mean, everything, everything's on the table. We, we, we can talk about anything. We're talking about, talking about sports, but obviously I'm not going on record with any of that because <laughs> this is all recorded in archives. Right. So for those of you just joining us, well, just joining us, we've only been uh, recording for about 10 seconds. So <laughs> you didn't miss anything. Congratulations. This is the Grow Podcast business podcast with Corey Mosley. I'm Corey Mosley. I'm joined today in another fantastic episode and opportunity by LG007. Lon Graham is here with us. Yes. Yes, indeed. We got any applause for that, William? Anything? We got to get him on the on the draw there. There you go. There you go. It's good to Almost see you Almost like I didn't even have to ask. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <I'm> a- <laughs> <laughs> well, good. We've been getting a lot of feedback. We've been getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. Uh, with you joining us, people are really excited. They're saying nice things. Well, thank um, you. And, you know, folks, if you don't know my philosophy, if you don't have anything nice to say about the podcast, then keep it to yourself <laughs> is my general attitude about it. I'm not I'm not looking for unsolicited negative feedback. Right. Okay? So, right. yeah. So right. we do appreciate some five-star reviews. We appreciate all positive comments. Um, keep the other stuff to yourself. We've got another great show, at least I think it's great. People have been enjoying these top five, these five lists, I think, for a couple reasons. One, because they are concise and very specific in terms of what we're talking about. That does not mean we don't reserve the right to go on a rant. (laughs) (laughs) Take a detour. Should something come to us. Um, I remember one time. (laughs) As a matter of fact. Yeah, look, as a matter of fact. (laughs) I remember one time I had posted something um, on my personal Facebook page, mm. and I think it I think it was something about police and, uh, you know, issues with the police or whatever, and I had posted something um, relative to that, which was my opinion based on my personal experience, which has been positive experiences. Um, I mean, listen, I've, you know, been pulled over. Uh, I, was, I was speeding when they pulled me over. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been pulled over those things, but... But I made a general comment, you know, just about my personal experience. And I remember this guy who I know, you know, he made a comment on my, you know, he made a comment like counter commenting on my comment. He was anti what you had to say. Right. Or different perspective or different other things. And I remember my, my major point because I'm, I'm generally, I'm not known to be nasty. So my general point was that. I'm sharing my personal experience on my personal Facebook page, right? right? So that wasn't an invite for debate and that wasn't, and whatever he wrote, I did, he was not wrong in what he was saying, but counteracting my, you can't counteract my personal experience and my personal statement (laughs) about what happens with me, not society, not the rest of the world. But what was happening with me? So right. I think that's the interesting thing when, you know, people make certain comments that they make is, you know, what do you, you know, why are you taking the time right. to, you, know, you have something positive to say, champion, you agree with what we're saying? I suppose if you want to make a counterpoint, knock yourself out. I mean, I, I guess, but I don't, I don't welcome all comments. Like, is that something you have to do? Well, I, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Like not. I don't I'm not interested in that in that PC aspect of it or you know all con- constructive criticism is all No. You know, I, I don't. my philosophy on constructive criticism is this. I don't know if we've talked about this or not. I don't know, this is interesting. I'm intrigued. But you know what constructive means, right? To construct to build, right? Right. So constructive criticism all you're doing is building criticism. Mm. It's not it's not Look contributory. At you with the reverse play. I like it's that. It's not contributory. It's it's you're building criticism. Right. So instead of building criticism, yeah. instead of building, you know, contributory value, yep. you're building criticism. I like that. And there's nothing valuable That's about that. That's a good that. point. That's kind of like the, when a, we were pointing a finger at someone, there's three, right, three pointing back right. at you yeah. kind of, right? Like yeah, it's that same, piece. Same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. But, but it, I mean, that's, that's my, look, it's evolved. Right. Because. Um, you know, as a sales leader and a salesperson, oh, we're getting ready to talk about I'm sales. I'm laughing because somebody <laughs> is going to make a comment right. on our comment about not making comments. Right, exactly. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> and you know what? 
Keep it to yourself. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's great. So if you love it, we love it. Otherwise, no thank you. Thanks for coming. But today, I'm super excited because we are talking about sales. Correct. Um, a topic that, you know, we might know a little, little something about uh, individually and collectively. We're talking about the five sales mistakes that could put you out of business. I like that end point. That could put you out of business in, in now. Right. <laughs> now, 2024, 2025. Right. Feeling at, at any point, because I think much of this that we're going to talk about is ubiquitous information. It's not, it's evergreen, right? It's not going to get old, I think, um, the five that we're going to cover today in this discussion. Right. Um, because the sales is sales is lifeblood. Nothing, nothing, folks, happens at a business right. until something gets sold. Well, 100%. And here's the thing. We'll go back to our five for a minute. We chose five because it's digestible. We chose five because mm-hmm. you can do five in the, in, in the context of this yep. podcast. The reality of it is the people that are listening aren't going to agree with our top five. And it's just like a top five list for well, who's I the best. I mean, I, well, but, that's, but, but that's, my, uh, that's, that's, but my point is, that's is negative that, self-talk. Well, my point, though, is this, yeah. is those are the people that are going to say, well, you left this out. And you left oh, this sure, out. Sure, and sure, you sure. left this out. And you're right. There's more than five. Well, here's the good the news. Five, these are the five we chose. Yeah, I didn't say <laughs> the only five right, mistakes exactly. or the number, you know. But I think right. people are going to find these to be both practical and pretty significant. And listen, my goal here, right, is not just to hear myself talk or to hear Lon talk. It is to get you thinking and talking, whether amongst your organization or if you're a solopreneur, talking about and, and examining, putting these things on the table. You yes. know, Peter Drucker said that, well, one of the many things that he said, but one of the things he said that's always stuck with me is an organization must be prepared to abandon everything they do today in order to survive in the future. Wow. Okay. And okay. so many people hold on to practices that in many cases don't serve them right. anymore. Right. Because that's policy, how we've always done it. Right. A policy, a procedure, a sales strategy, right? Some things are, are also having a renaissance effect. We're seeing, I just read an article literally the other day, it might have been 24 hours ago, about supermarkets starting to remove self-checkouts. Ah, interesting. Because consumers are becoming so dissatisfied with the experience. That's interesting. Yes. That's so interesting. Yeah, because, well, the customer at the end of the day will ultimately tell you <laughs> right. Right, if they're receptive or not receptive to right. a situation. Um, and and that's very interesting. And we saw that. We The other area that we saw that with is we saw that with open space offices oh right that was all the rage we went to open space just pick any desk you want and that was going to be great and and create community and for a lot of companies this has been disastrous because a people can't even make you what are you dragging around your kid's picture right and setting it up at your pod for the day (laughs) right to look at like people can't even create a space of their own you got to go into a photo booth a phone booth to make a phone call or get on Zoom. So right. that's another thing that I think has seen a lot of backlash. It was hot for a while, and now right. you're seeing you're seeing some differences there. So there is this evolution. But a lot of people just, you know, as the saying goes, you can't go through life driving, looking through your rearview mirror. Right. You know? Right. Um, so that's the challenge here today. So let me let me set the uh stage. Please. And then and then we'll go into these. Um Lon has no idea what these five are. This is this is the fun of the this is the, this is the <laughs> fun of the show. Five. So we get That's to say it and we get to get his reaction, right. right? So let me set the stage. Marketing departments don't exist without sales. Customer service departments don't exist without customers created by sales. And personnel, including the owners, can't get paid without, you guessed it, sales. Yeah. In any non-investor capital-based business, meaning you're funding it yourself, in any non-investor capital-based business, when sales revenue doesn't exceed expenses, it's usually game over for a company. Now, the internet and the viral market and the virtual marketplace have made it easier to become another company's competition and has made it harder to compete simultaneously. 
A laser focus on growing sales must be a daily way of life at your company. To save you time, money, and stress, we're going to present the five mistakes for you to avoid when trying to grow sales. A laser focus, right? 100%. I mean, laser focus. I mean, we, we meet every day to talk about pipelines, right? right? In our organization. Who's where? Who's doing what? Who we need to follow up with? Who needs to get a, who needs to get a meeting? What tactic do we need to take? Particularly, you know, for those of you that are listeners that are in service-based business, professional services, B2B service-based businesses, particularly that don't necessarily depend on high volume, right? right. You're not doing, you don't need a hundred sales a month to, to meet your goals or a thousand sales. There really is an opportunity to use time management to put an emphasis on some of the personal things. I mean, many times the conversations we're having in our sales meetings are about how to handle you need, how to handle an individual client. Right. Right. And right. what can we do unique to that client? Right. Not just let's send a bulk email. What, what pithy email can we send out to everybody right. to try to do something? So I think personalization is important, but all right. Are you ready for number one LG 007? Yes, indeedy. Let's go. All right. Mistake one. Weak sales funnel. Okay. So there's a big misconception in the business community when it comes to the world sales funnel. Okay. People think about click funnels. People think about all this, all these moving parts and all these different things. But the reality of it is every business must have a, sa- a solid sales funnel to grow sales, period. Correct. Right? And that's not necessarily the visual. That is simply a process. Your funnel is a process of how someone comes into your ecosystem, how they engage with your product and service, and how they're led to take the next steps in terms of doing business right. or the things that you're doing or not doing to increase the opportunity for them to do business. Because a weak sales funnel could put you out of business because it results in inefficient client attraction, follow-up, and customer decision conversion. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things, Corey, you talk about the funnel, and the funnel is really the opening. Mm. And so that's where everything goes in. The right. pipeline is the filter. Right. So you get them into the funnel, and then you use the pipeline as a filter, and that is what you're talking about. Next steps. How do you engage them in next steps? How do you mm-hmm. get them involved in their buying cycle? Once you close them, how do you follow up? How do you get them through? Because because the other piece of this, and you know, we're talking about the beginning, right. but just as important as the, as the beginning is the end. What do you do after the sale? Yep. How do you deliver? But that's part of your entire system. That's you right. know, the funnel is really your entire system of sales. Right. And the pipeline in the beginning is how you get more people in so that you can filter out your ideal clients and the people you want to work with. And here's the thing. You have a funnel either way. <laughs> right. Right. Now, it could be a terrible one. I can go to your website right now and dial your telephone number, leave a message, and nobody's calling me back for a week. That's a sales funnel. Right. You just have a bad one. Well, there's action and reaction, right? Are you acting or are you reacting? Right. I can can go to your website, have no idea exactly what you do or how you're going to help me, and leave. Right. That's a sales funnel. Your website is a sales funnel, right? So a growth-based sales funnel is what we're talking about. It's always going to include clear talking points about your business, a conversion-focused website. The word conversion focus is very important because there's a lot of people out there who can build you a website. But what will be tip, but but there's a lot of people who will follow your direction. Right. And if you don't know what a conversion-based website is or how to architect one. You'll simply give bad information to a service provider that will happily make your website purple if you want. Will happily mix and match the colors that, you know, are your favorite colors and put those on the website. They'll put your pictures that weren't taking very well or professionally on there. They'll do what you say to construct that. Right. And that's why, and that's why we have to put those, what are those adjectives? Verbs? What is the conversion focused? Action words. Yeah, action words. Okay, good. Neither <laughs> one of us want to want to go on record as well, my, ha- having. 
My sister's an English major, so okay. if she's listening to we'll this and I get it check. wrong, I'll hear about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll fact check, right? <laughs> so you want convert you want those words, those action <laughs> words. That's good. I like that. Those action words in front of that, right? right. So we want a conversion focused website. We want some form of a lead generator. Right. If you go to growacorey.com uh, right now, you're going to have an opportunity to join both our newsletter, but you're also going to be able to join the five pillars of business growth video series that I recorded. Perfect. And you can watch that. Right. You know, so we have, it's a lead generator, right? right. People put in their email address and their information. Now they're on our list so we can communicate. If they like our information, they stay on our list. If they end up wanting to do some business, we do some business. If not, they can enjoy the information, but right. it's, it's a lead generator, right? Right. So we want to have that, and you want to have campaigns to nurture and facilitate. Right. Nurture and facilitate, to your point, the back end, right? The closure of deals. Right. Right. And this is very simple because you could listen to this right now and ask yourself an easy question. What's my sales funnel? What is that? What is the process? How does someone come into my business? Okay, great. My sales funnel is... I go to networking events and I introduce myself to people and tell them what I do, right? That's, that's a lead generator for them. Now, what do you direct them to do at that point? Oh, I just, you know, I pull out my phone and give them my digital business card. Right. Okay, great. All that means is you got more people in your phone now. You got more information. Yeah. Right. You got, you just added more people to your contact list. You ever go through your, I go through my contact list um, here and there. And I start scamming down, and I go, I have no idea who this person even is. Right. That's why I use the notes section in my Right. right? I'm like, you know, Roy Johnson Jr. I, I got no I got no clue who this person right. is. And then, worse yet, I don't know, there's people in my phone with just one name. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know who that is. Right. Um, because they're probably in there for, you know, with the cloud now, right? You just wrote, you, as you've rolled through phones. Right. They just dump it over. You so, in right, I guarantee you there's somebody in there from iPhone 1 that's in <laughs> my, that's still in my phone contact list. Right. Right from the first iPhone. Like Steve Jobs was a live iPhone. Right. So that can't be real. Oh, I give him my digital business card and then, you know, I follow up. I don't know. Do you direct them? I mean, do you direct them to the website? Is there some information that you can give them? Is there something you can put in their, their hands? You know, we had a group. We had a group of executives in um, a couple weeks ago, right? From top corporate. I mean, several Fortune, several Fortune one hundreds on the list that were at the office. Um, and I did the presentation I was there to do, and then I made sure that everyone had a copy of my last book. Oh wow! Entrepreneurship Confidential now available on Amazon dot com. There you go. <laughs> Part of that sales funnel. Right, right, part of that sales funnel. But I made sure they had a copy of the book. Now, they weren't entrepreneurs. They were executives. They were people in the corporate world. But they could pass it to somebody. Right. They, but I also put in hands another opportunity for them to hear my ideas. Right. That could be valuable. Right. Could be passed to somebody in the organization. It's, it's, it's proof yeah. in writing sure. that you know what you're talking about. Right. And that could be relevant to somebody. Maybe it, get pa- maybe it gets passed along. Maybe they're going to have a sales rally or a sales meeting like, oh, you know, well, this guy made a lot of sense. Um, or they're doing something that connects back to that. Right. But keeping that, keeping that activity in play, right. looking for those opportunities is, is, is going to make a lot of sense. So looking at that sales funnel, I right. challenge you to just write those steps down. What, is, what are the steps to do business with your organization, your company, your business right now? What does someone have to do or go through? Right. Are you, are you, re- how fast do you return an email? How fast do you respond to a lead? We say same business day. If a lead comes in our organization within business hours, right? You know, somebody's reaching out, they're, they're, they're getting some kind of touch, right? Right. And folks, that's, that has to be a policy that is discussed. Not the generic, oh, you know, oh, Corey, we respond to people right away. Well, what's right away? Right. What are the expectations for right away? Right. And does everybody else know that? Right. <laughs> Inside your organization, if you, if you have pe- layers, right. right, if there's a sales team or, or that type of thing, who else knows that process? Right. And the smaller your business is, by way of team, not necessarily revenue, but by way of team, 
the more you need to determine what your accountability is going to be to yourself. Right. Because there's no one else to hold that deal. We have a sales meeting and I'm going with you. What are we doing with this person? What are we, he, he loves it. Uh, what are we doing with this person? What are we doing with this person? What are we doing with this person? Remove me from the equation or remove you from the equation. Right. I, I definitely have to have a policy right. for myself to self-check myself or else I will take this approach of being lackadaisical. It's a default. Right. Oh, a lead came in. Okay, I'll, I'll. There's a false hunger. People lie <laughs> about how hungry they are for business. Right. How aggressive they are. That's a that's a lie, and people lie to themselves all the time about that. Oh, Corey, you know I'm hungry for all business. All right, great. I passed you a referral three days ago. Right. They told me they still haven't heard from you. Or I'm asking people, oh, whatever happened with so-and-so? Right. Oh, yeah, well, I'm still looking at that. I sent an email. Yeah, you're not aggressive. It is much more fun and interesting to talk about being aggressive than it is to actually do it. Well, you know, the quote that I like is champions are made when no one's looking, right? Mm. So... And, or, or, or an aversion of that is what you do in the dark shows is revealed in the light. So if you're not working when nobody's looking, it shows up when they are. If you're doing right. the work when they're, when nobody's looking, that also shows up when they are. Mm. So you have those answers. If you've got a problem and, and it goes back to, you know, to restate what you said differently is create something that you do regularly mm. to ensure that you're doing it regularly. Right. That's it. Because whether it's you or whether it's a team of three or a team of five or a team of 12. Right. Or a team of 500. Create standards so that you're doing those regularly so that everybody knows what to expect and everybody knows that they're being done. And if you miss it. Right. Then you know that, too. And, and don't. And the other thing I see is don't set an expectation that you can't deliver on. Right. That's worse. I'd much more respect calling a number, getting a voicemail that tells me what's going to happen next. Right. I don't get mad that no one answered the phone. That that may not be plausible. Right. But what I don't but what I don't want to see is you've got chat on your website. I click the chat and it's down all the time. Right. Oh yeah, you know we got chat on our website, Corey. Fantastic. Is there any chats going on? <laughs> Can I chat? Right. Because we'll overthink, we'll overuse the technology. You know, text this number, and then now no one ever texts back. So got to have just a, a, a correlative effect on that. All right, let's talk right. about number two because we'll be here we, forever. We, right. Yeah, we're rolling, though. We, I mean, I, I mean, listen, I hope that people are finding that valuable information because I there's, a, there's strength in redundancy. The redundancy is what creates the action, right? Challenge, right. challenge, challenge. Talk about it again. Talk about it again. Right. Because I, I want someone to finish this podcast today and go ask themselves, are they at risk in any of these five areas? Right. And now set on, on that road to start to have corrective measures or take corrective measures. Right. Right. So awareness is great. All right. Number two. <clears throat> Number two. Do we have a. Drum roll on any of these? Okay, William, still behind a ball on that, folks. We, eventually, we, we, we will get uh, we will get <laughs> we will get a drum roll soon. Where I've put in a a, a ticket, <laughs> what is it? I put in a support <laughs> ticket to reduction <laughs> for a drum roll. Uh, maybe he'll surprise us one day. All right, mistake number two. In the meantime, he'll put a drum roll in and post watch. Right. Lack of a value first strategy okay all right so things like sales quotas and objectives while needed often create an environment where it's easy to skip steps when hunting for new business so a value first strategy when you're talking about that that involves creating a sales environment built to enlighten and influence customers through the purchase process okay so just as you wouldn't ask someone of course to uh marry you after you first met them 
Many business owners miss opportunities because they fail to have a structured way to ensure they are giving value to their potential customers. So an example, if you go to growcory.com, before you're asked to buy anything or do any business or even consider one of our programs or products or services, right. I want you to have a free video series. There you go. Right? Right. Spin, I don't know. It's probably an hour's worth of content. When, what do you think that was? That was 50 minutes, 40 minutes to an hour. He doesn't remember. We, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. An hour. Right. In across four videos, four or five videos. Right. You're going to learn. You're whether going to go, I like this guy's delivery. I, I feel like he's talking to me. I, I like what he has to say. Or I don't. Right. No purchase necessary. <laughs> Right. In that situation, right? Right. So it becomes value first. Right. And a lot of people, I don't think, I, mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we do the work that we do, particularly in our video production business. Right. Because we're creating value. We're, crea- we're, we're allowing experts to create value right. for the marketplace. Right. Instead of just going buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Yes, I want you to buy my stuff. Right. But here's some information that could be valuable to you well here's a sample of what you're buying you know am am i doing business am i throwing business at you am i doing business with you and if we're doing it together that means we're building on it and it's much more likely to be sustainable if you're doing if you're trying to if you're all you're doing is going after the sale going after the sale going after the sale yeah that that's a numbers game but that's not sustainable and unless you're selling a single shot item Right. You're you you working way, way, way too hard mm. for I got a buddy that says is the juice worth the squeeze. Right. You know, how hard are you working to get That's it? not exclusive to your buddy. A lot of people say that, but go ahead. Said, but I'm <laughs> okay. a, you know, why didn't you know it, I'm not gonna take I heard for it. it was a secret secret Inuit uh, <laughs> quote. <laughs> Inuit. Oh Lord have What did you say earlier? Socrates. Uh, Socrates, so great, so so great, so great, so great that Confucius say, right, okay, exactly. gotcha, yeah, all right, juice worth the squeeze. Go ahead, I'm sorry, finish your thought. The the point of it being though is, is that if you're doing business at somebody, mm. you're pushing them away, right? And even if they buy, you're still pushing them away. But right. If you're doing this engagement, if you're giving a little bit, attracting mm-hmm, them, mm-hmm, hey, mm-hmm. I want some more of that. Okay, here's how you can get a little bit more of that. Right. Okay, I want some more of that. Okay. Well, the next layer. You're gonna to have to invest in, right? But you've already known you already you know like what my you're free getting. stuff, right? You're gonna love my page. You're stuff. gonna love what you're investing in, yeah. right? That's why we call it an investment. Sure. So it's it's again doing it with somebody, you know, getting them engaged, and and taking and getting some feedback from them, right? Like if you have the ability to get some feedback, say, hey, I like this. I got a question. Oh, now you have an opportunity to open up in some engagement. So that's what you're talking about. They get a chance to see a little bit. Yep. A girl with Corey.com. Yep. Same thing with a speaker reel. If you're a speaker, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. here's a little bit. Of, here's a Correct. appetizer of my content. Right. You can see how I look and right. how I sound. Featured video interview. 100%. The featured interviews featured. that we do here. Exactly. Yep. 100%. E- you know, expertise. Yes. If you like that. Right. Then, and if you don't, fine. You just say both of us time. And even as a company, because <laughs> this isn't exclusive to consultants or, or, or that manner, major corporations, right, that will put out a report. They'll, they'll, you know, Cisco will put out a report on the state of video. Right. Uh, AI reports. You'll see consumer purchase history reports put out by organizations. Right. That's that's a value add. Right. right. So that's also letting you know we've done deep research and have deep knowledge in this particular area where we can help you. Right. We know what we're talking yeah. about. And here's proof. Exactly. Exactly. So value first. Think about ways that you can add that value. I mean, you know, in its simplest form. Right. Back in the day when we went to malls. What? <laughs> <laughs> when we went to malls, right. they, well, who was out there? They were out there, the, the, the bourbon chicken place. We've all had, if you eat meat, we've all <laughs> had, if you eat meat and you've been to a mall, you've had a bourbon chicken sample right. from whatever the place was that was there. Right. Standing outside here, you want to sample it, right? With a toothpick. Right. It was value first. That's Let me right. wet your whistle, right. as my mother would say. Right. I don't know why. I don't know why she says that and why I know that. Uh, I don't know why she says that or why. <laughs> <laughs> why it came from that uh sparrows sparrows gave out free pizzas they gave out what 
I love when he whispers. You might right. as well just talk. It's okay. Right. They know there's other people in the studio <laughs> right. right now. Like, you've been <laughs> they give out they give out sample slices, sparrows. Oh, a little piece. Okay, bites. bourbon chicken. That was the better right. example. Sparrows. Right. Like a Sabaros. Like, like pepperoni slice size bite. Yeah. Sabaros. You, you know, I listen to the back. I could use a dollar fifty slice now. They don't have those anymore, mm, right? No. You just get a big slice size of your head to go along with the heartburn you had later. But <laughs> but true. that was a big that It was, was always right slice. next to CVS or or <laughs> yeah, Walgreens. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a pie, get free tubs. Right, exactly. <laughs> Allegedly, I think we have to say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Allegedly. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right. Let's go on. Store. Mistake we'll number three. Okay. Number yeah. three. We're going number three. Number three. But um bump. Okay, drum roll. <laughs> I'm gonna pause and this is All right, we'll take that one. Uh, that, was that was my heartbeat. Yeah, that was a, a limpy. Uh, but we'll get there. All right, number three. No sales versatility. Okay. So many businesses, you know, and this is for people particularly of sales teams, because a lot of times businesses typically fall on one end of the spectrum or the other when it comes to executing a sales process. So on the one end, you've got this idea of going with the flow, right? Oh, I've got, Corey, I've got professional people that know what they're doing and they know how to engage a buyer and they're let, let, they're allowed to engage that buyer any way that they see fit. Okay. Because, oh, I, you know, what's the point of having experienced salespeople if I'm not going to let them do their thing? Right? Terrible idea <laughs> from a scale perspective, okay? And anybody, let me be very clear, and anybody who may be listening to this that says that's the exact strategy we have and we've been successful, let me say to you unequivocally right now, that may be true. But I guarantee you, you are leaving significant dollars on the table. Okay? I spent almost 20 years working with sales teams of 70, 80 organizations that had thousands of salespeople. Right. And I know <laughs> a structured process will beat anybody's freestyling any day of the week. Well, and there are ways to structure customization. You and, and, yeah. and I think what people think about it when when they hear that is you can't customize, and you can, well, you can do both. Yes. you can structure because that's the can, other end, right? You can structure your customization. Yeah, you can allow people to get and in, be invested in the in the ultimate product. Right, but, but there's a process that you can. Well, go and there's a the middle main, ground, right? Correct, so, right. so, so on the one end, we talk about going with the flow. Right. The other end of the equation is having a a, a system that's so rigid, right, and so disciplined, right, that you know, man, if you if there's no room for critical thinking here, and you're going to be terminated if you don't follow this exactly to the team. Right. That's a door to door, yellow pages back in the day. Here's right. what we, here's what we got. You can buy one page. You can buy, and that's why you need versatility because. Right. Versatility, sales versatility, a sales, let me define it, a sales versatility strategy involves training sales professionals to identify buyer personalities. This is a psychology approach here. Right. Identifying buyer personalities during a prospecting process. Right. And then knowing how to make the adjustments right. in their presentation, pitch, whatever you want to call it, sales process to meet that buyer specific needs. Right. I remember going to a car dealership. And they had a flip chart in there, and they they had a sales process, and it was like these these questions, right? And that's not how I buy, right? I I I will generally get to the point that I'm trying to make, okay. right? Here's I'm familiar with I'm familiar with this car, I'm familiar with this. Here's what I'm looking to do. Oh, okay. Oh well, Sir Hart, let me start uh, name. Uh, what are you currently driving now? Right. What What is the uh? What is who? How much do you owe? What is the bet? Stop. Right. I'm not interested in going through your worksheet. Right. And the problem with that is that gets misconstrued. That's not me being a jerk. Right. It's That's me trying to assist you in the way that I like to buy. Right. And that moves the transaction faster. Also leaves me not irritated. Right. <laughs> right. Which should be everyone's numero uno. 
well, <laughs> goal. Well, here is to here, not leave me irritated. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> here's. You here's, disagree with that? <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna change language. If you're watching this on YouTube, he's you, my you gotta look at him on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> he made a face. So Go ahead. here's. Here, we're in, here's a blinker. I'm going to change lanes. I'm going to keep going forward with that. Here's the reality. When you're in sales, you got to define success. And success is the sale. So if you're so locked in on the process yes. and the person's ready to buy, you can dissuade the sale yes. and push them away by not recognizing that they say, I'm ready to buy. Yes. And that's what you're talking about is we get so structure or process oriented that we lose sight of the fact that we're actually trying to make a sale. Right. And somebody's ready to buy, and we right. we and, and so it's like when they're ready, when they say yes, stop talking, right? <laughs> stop selling, yeah. yeah. Stop talking. So okay, and you can go into there's plenty of great, you know, people out there that cover this and have courses and training on that, and I recommend. Uh, we don't sell, you know, we don't sell sell training classes or anything. So, so it's not a commercial for us. I recommend right. <laughs> you skill up and invest while everybody's looking at how they're cutting expenses and cutting corners. Don't cut corners on your people or don't cut corners on your education when it comes to that. 100%. Because our point is sales versatility. So whether that's increasing your sales skills, understanding different types of buyers, understanding how to make, uh, understanding how to identify, better identify some buying signals and signs, all right. that is a function of training. But the high level mistake is not having versatility in that process. Right. Right. Oh, Corey, we're old school. Great. <laughs> so you'll continue to sell to old school buyers. Right. Oh, Corey, we're all new school. We're a, we're a digital first, app first, contactless first. Great. You're dead with boomers, octogenarians, whatever, whatever people, called. People who have even, money. Even, even Gen X, <laughs> right, even Gen Xers. Right, people uh, who have money. You know, we have a Whole Foods by our house. We will, we have a guy, a, a gentleman there, a Filipino gentleman. Um, I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> <laughs> but he sings like to oh, yeah. Uh, yeah he sings and stuff we will not i don't care how now the lines are never terrible at a whole foods right. but they've got you know seven self checkouts there and all right. that stuff we don't care we will if we see him on the register we're standing in his line it doesn't matter if two's open right and four's got two people we're gonna stand in his line to see him right if he's not there we go to self checkout right exactly so now, that's just how I'm wired. So I'd be very upset if I walked into Whole Foods one day and it's all self-checkout. Right. They've got the palm thing there. I ain't doing it. I can't say never. Right. But I'm, I'm, you know, putting my palm. Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist. The government's already got what they need on me. Right. Because uh, I've got, I mean, if you've got uh, uh, TSA Pre, I had, I've had clear for 10, 15 years um, where... They do a retinal scan. I mean, they got all the goods. Right, they, you're not keeping them from getting yeah. what you need. Yeah, I've had clear so long. If you clear, clear, most of you are seeing it now. But I've had clear so long. When clear first came out, you had to go to one of their offices. Yeah. There was no online, no get it at the airport. I had to go to Manhattan. And they were on a half floor. <laughs> That's a real thing. Right. They were like on the 29 and a half floor. Right. And it was kind of, if you ever saw Being John Malkovich, the movie? Yes. Like where, so, and where everything was like shrunken. It was like that. You got off on 29 and a half. And I mean, I'm not a super tall guy. I'm 5'9". <laughs> but you knew that you were on a half floor. It didn't feel like a full floor. Right. Like, that wasn't a, they weren't playing games. And they were like 29 and a half. Somebody didn't just make that up right it was a half floor and I'm, I'm going up half steps like everything was half <laughs> i'm going to half steps and a half archway right and then you get into this room and there was one machine that they had that's all they could afford right. back then they had one machine and you had to go over to it and get all your biometrics get your eyes uh it was your it was your fingerprints now now it's your eyes that they can yeah. do now i did do um, that too yeah, yeah. Well, for yeah. gsa pre-check and yeah so pre and, and pre-checks then. evolved but like so but i'm just not the palm I, it's just not interesting to me it's very impersonal right and I'm a I'm a personal I like I you know one day I'll have a psychologist figure me out but <laughs> because I hate change and I love change right. it's very strange I like to see the same people like I want to see my guy at Whole Foods right if he's gone I'm gonna be upset right like 
it's not, I mean, you, you know, a lot of other things to be worried about, right? First world problems, as they say. But I'm going to be upset. I like seeing that guy. But in the same token, we deal, you know, we've got stuff going on different every day, right? right. Projects, my consulting work, all those different right. things. But sales versatility is the word. Versatility is your word that I want you to ingrain in yourself and say, how, how are we flexible? How are we versatile? Do we have different modes? Uh, if you visit our office, we do check out on a QR code. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, and if that's a challenge for some people, we have other ways of, of dealing with it. But that creates a great streamlined process for us right. internally. Is modern. But we've got a plan, right? We're, we're yeah. versatile if something comes up. Well, and it's, I mean, I think the way to, to condense it is structured versatility, right? Yeah. You have versatility. You have options within lanes. Oh, okay. That's that was, all I got. Okay, okay. Right. That's all I got. Structure versus two. You looked at me like, Lon, you got to talk yeah, a little thought, bit longer because no, no, I'm that was, in the middle of a sip. Yeah, yeah, I thought there was something else coming out there. All right. Well, great. That moves us to number four. Thank right. you for that. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Number four. Number four. Number four. Being fearful. This is how it actually connects what we were just talking about. Being fearful of new information. Ooh. We were just talking about apps and all these things. Right. There's a lot of apps. There's a lot of marketing channels. There's a lot of so-called game-changing services. Right. Everybody's a game changer on the right. market. Um, and the fact is that can be quickly overwhelming. Yes. And what happens in many instances to avoid making bad decisions or making costly decisions, many business owners will become paralyzed right. and do nothing. Right. It goes too complicated. I'm too overwhelmed. I'm too busy. Now, when you study the downfall of companies, okay, some of the biggest names that we think about that immediately come to mind. We think of the, you know, we can't you can't talk about a business failure story without a Kodak or a Blockbuster right. coming in. When you think about the downfall, right. many times what you quickly learn is that a failure to change and adapt is often the number one thing. That started the downward spiral. Right. There's no reason Blockbuster shouldn't be Netflix. Right. Absolutely no reason for that. They had all right. the money. They had all the cash. They had all the market share. Absolutely no reason. They couldn't have gone immediately to mail order. They should have been Netflix and Redbox. Right. They already had, they had the, they had the distribution. They had the relationships with the uh, vendors. They could have quickly started shuttering stores and replacing them with kiosks, right. a la Redbox. They could have gone mail order, and they certainly could have gone stream. Right. Somebody else knew better. Right. Right. And that's well, the, that's the danger inside the corporations. But Blockbuster, Nokia, yeah, Motorola, Motorola, BlackBerry. Who didn't have a BlackBerry? <laughs> right. The CrackBerry. Right. Who didn't have that? It was greatest invention. Right. They had a network, they had government. Yeah. They, 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 they had all these things. And then Steve Jobs said, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, iPhone should have never been able to, 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 to dominate. So early adaption of technology, but also remaining open-minded to training and strategies, even though it may go against your previous experiences. Right. Should remain and will remain and must remain a central theme in your story of business growth a hundred percent and i think what where people get lost is is either they say that's too scary i don't want to embrace it mm -hmm. or overwhelming yep like we had a conversation today with one of our clients and we we're providing some assets as part of a package right and she's in the business that we're creating these assets for and she was, you could see the look on her face like, right. wow, we provided an awful lot more than she was prepared for. Right. And and that's okay. We we walked it back and, and helped sure. her understand what she was sure. getting. But my point being is sometimes it's overwhelming because there's so many things coming at you. Right. The other, and so you're like, well, I, I, I'm paralyzed to do anything. The other thing is, and and look, we all love early adopters because early adopters are the first one to adopt. Right. But they they also are the are the least likely to sustain something because they're jumping on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I think the best way to figure out what's right for you and what's not is to clearly define success for you and your business or you and your company 
and then use that as the filter for all the decisions that you make. And so what you do is you say, is this going to help me get closer to the success I'm trying to get? And if it's not, then you don't have to use that. Not every piece right. of technology, not every advancement's for you, but not every advancement's not for you either. Right. There are some that are good and some that aren't, and you just have to create a filter for yourself that allows you to go through the decision-making process and say, will this help me or not? Right. And that's, I mean, and that's where people get overwhelmed is, is they don't have what I call a North Star, right? Mm. How do you use, what is your North Star? What are you trying to accomplish? And then use that as your guidepost or your filter or whatever it is that you want to call it. But use that as a way to decide whether this is a good decision or not. No, that makes complete sense. William, our producer, said, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this word. What is it? Nose. Uh, Nosia phobia. Oh, interesting. Is uh, fear of knowledge. Oh, wow. Okay. Nos means knowledge and phobia means fear. Okay. So in terms of mental illness, <laughs> the patient faces extreme anxiety and stress while acquiring knowledge and learning something new. Wow. That's interesting. That's huge. Right? Now, you got to be smart enough to be able to figure that out. Mm. That's a big. That's a big word. Mm. Yeah, I said nosa nosophobia. I'm glad he sent it to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's one of the things that Seth Godin says often, um, or he's been quoted as saying many things. He's been quoted: the cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. 100. percent You're absolutely right, and he's absolutely right. Yeah, that's strong. Yeah, absolutely, I like right. that one. The co- Let me replay that. Yeah. <laughs> the cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. Yeah. Shout out to Seth Godin. Yeah. What was it, Purple Cow or something like that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like purple that. Cow. Not to be confused with Purple Goldfish, which ah, is our friend, which is another friend. friend Stan right. Phelps. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. We don't want to confuse that. All right. Let's get to five. Let's get yeah, to let's five get to before five. we get out of here. What do we got for five? All right. Keeping five alive. Keeping five alive. Were we supposed to? No, okay. Keeping five alive. <laughs> I've been counting. I didn't know what so he we... wanted. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that. High five. Do... Okay, there we go. That's only for we YouTube. Go. YouTube, you can have to go to YouTube to see the exclusive <laughs> high five we just right, did. Behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A little BTS for you. All right. Mistake number five of our five sales mistakes that could put you out of business okay. is an overall reliance on new business ah because there's an amazing amount of dollars that gets poured into acquiring new customers right right we talk about client acquisition costs customer acquisition costs all these all these different acronyms that we'll look at yet for most businesses only a fraction of their sales and marketing dollars goes towards repeat referral or evangelistic derived right deal creation right people out there singing their praises right Businesses that rely too heavily on new sales experience significantly more sales volatility than those who cultivate and execute a targeted strategy within the six degrees of separation rule. The failure to create more predictable opportunities from past customers and the people they know traces back to poor database management and a lack of an omni-channel communications system. Drive more sales with previous customers by remembering that visible This is a Corey Mosley original. Okay. Visible equals valuable. Oh, good. Okay. I tell this to consultants all the time. Right. Oh, I'm on an, I've wrapped an engagement up or I don't have a, you need touch points with your clients. Right. If you're an in-person consultant, you need to go there. Right. Build that into your cost. Charge a little more so you can have touch points. If clients that don't see you, people that are paying you on a repetitive basis, don't see you, don't talk to you, don't hear from you. Even if things are going great, right, you're going to become expendable. Right. I see it happen over and over again. Right. Uh, but visible equals valuable. All right. Your thoughts on number five. Well, I think I think the highest cost is acquisition of new customers. So sure. your so your profitability is always lower in trying to get new business. The other part of it is, like you talked about, it's less sustainable because When you have people that are already working with you, sure, you've already demonstrated the way to the way to build trust within the sales process is consistency 
develops credibility and credibility builds trust. Yeah. So you've got to get to the trust point. And once they trust you, they don't want to leave. So invest in those people that are already working with you. Now, inevitably, I'm going to get, well, Corey, you know, I don't have the luxury of selling a product that someone can consume multiple times. Okay. Right? So you don't, you know, you're, you're, you know, my, uh, we have a client that has a pet store, very successful pet store. Right. Well, I mean, he's in the business. Dogs got to have food. Right. Dog got to eat. That's right. Cat got to eat. Right. Now, they don't need all them snacks that they make us buy for our dogs. <laughs> they don't need all them treats. They just need core food. Right. But that's a reoccurring model, right? Correct. So do a good job. Be friendly. Be nice. People will come back. I mean, and then, and then you look at ways you can incentivize people to, to make decisions faster, right? 100%. Um, you know, they do an event every uh, once or twice a year, at least once a year, where, you know, anything you can fit in their bag that they have right. is half off. Right. So that brings people out, right, to, to load up and try to jam. You know, my wife and I are in there. I'm trying to jam a 70-pound bag of dog food, and it's been folded up sideways <laughs> because that's the most expensive item. I should take that back because it's vitamins. These, I've got the healthiest dogs. Good. Now, I have no idea. I had dogs growing up as a child. Right. My mother, bless her heart, I don't think those dogs saw a vet even in times of crisis. Okay. I don't know that they ever got a booster shot for any reason. Um, and many of my dogs live to be 12, 13, 14 years old. Okay. Now, it doesn't seem like there's any reason right. that my dog's on coconut oil, <laughs> salmon oil. Right. Uh, uh, uh dusted flower echinacea powder, <laughs> chondroitin, hip and joint, joint and hip, hip joint, <laughs> just to survive. Right. And I think, the, I think the quality of beef that's in their food is higher than the, what steaks I got in my refrigerator. Grain f- grass, grass-fed, free-roam, massaged. It's crazy. Right, right. I digress. <laughs> the conversation which, which being is the point, right? The conversation being, yeah, okay, you sell a one-off, right? You, right. you you sell something that people don't necessarily need to have right away. Right. And there's really two ways. There's two ways to resolve that. Number one, focusing on how you can incentivize right them to talk to their network, to talk to their. So great, you know, you sell flooring, and you just did a job, ten thousand square feet flooring. That guy's probably not going to need flooring for the next twenty years. He right. doesn't get another location. Right. But guess what? He belongs to a community, right. whatever his product or service is, that does, and those people need floors. So whoever his colleagues are, his friends, the association that he belongs to for right. whatever needs that. So you whether figure out a way to incentivize them to refer you, incentivize, they need to get activated, and that's the spoiler alert, that's not always money. Right. Not everyone responds to a financial incentive. Right. And number two is... Creating something within your product line right? That for them to purchase. Yeah, so there's a couple of things, right? One is you expand your line that's in line with what you're already doing. So maybe you have floor care products that they have to come back and get. You're, you know, you sell correct. flooring. Correct, correct. Maybe you have floor care products. That's right. You sell a pool. Well, you sell, you know, you got to sell pool supplies, that's right? That's right. You sell tools and cleaner and flu, all that stuff. I've got a friend who is my friend first and also my realtor who has built a community and what she does. And so this, you know, Thanksgiving is a holiday in the year and the week before Thanksgiving, she buys pies for her clients and right. she does a pie pickup and has people come pick them up at their office and it becomes a community event. It's an afternoon event and they have people there mm-hmm. and they have games mm-hmm. and they bring the kids. And so people remember her. Right. And they she invites them to a holiday party at the beginning of December for, for holiday. Right. And she has events and people and food and, and it's she's built this community. Mm-hmm. So while she you know, she, inventory is what inventory is, and you may only buy one house from her, but you know people. I've referred, you know, she sold my house. Right. I've referred five or six people to her. Right. And she's called and said, Hey Lon, are you willing to be a reference for me? Right. A hundred percent. Sure. So it's you, you, you can build products right? or you can build community. Sure. And you can do both too, 
but there's but create something that keeps people engaged right so that they they're a part of your world and a part of your community because community creates sustainability and sustainability is going to bring people back and from a market if you want a technical term uh marketers will refer to that as toma right top of mind awareness 100 percent so uh, yeah no lots of great points there oh i think that's it i think we did it did we make it i think we made it i Good. think we i think we've dropped some nuggets today hopefully our our listeners uh and viewers if you're if you're streaming this on video um i hope you've got some value today i hope there's some things that you can go back and say because these are specific questions right that you get to go back and ask you know right how much are we relying on new business that's a specific question right um you know what have we said no to right that we may need to revisit someone's come in and wanting to upgrade our systems or add apple pay uh, or i was in a business I, I went to a business the other day and all they kept saying in line every time somebody pulled up their phone is we don't have Apple Pay. Right. Or we don't have tap to pay. Right. And she had to say it over and over again. So I finally got in line. I said, I'm just curious. How many, how many times a day do you have to say that? Right. And more importantly, what I'm thinking is, why don't you people just upgrade your system? It's not that this is not where you got to get Watson, where you got to do an IBM. IBM's got to send somebody in. To bring right. servers into your office to upgrade a system now. Right. All these Square, Clover, all these POS systems now that have easy, affordable, nimble products. It's not that hard to get a tap joint. For 50 bucks, you can get one. Right. So why you would spend the day irritating people, guys walking up, got his phone out. Oh, no, sorry, we don't have tap to pay. Now, because I could go on for another, I can go for another. Half. Right. This, I don't understand why business owners miss something as simple as this. They would rather say this 50 times a day right. than in, introduce the convenience for the customer, which only helps them right. do more business. Now, the guy who gets with the counter, unless he's not carrying a wallet or no traditional credit card, and most of us still aren't there. Right. So even people who prefer Apple Pay or whatever still have a, a, a credit card of some sort or right. debit card in their pocket. Right. So, no, they're not going to cancel their everything bagel with cream cheese and, and grape jam right. because they don't have it. It's just an inconvenience that, that I'll put in the back of my head. Right. It's a slight inconvenience. But that happens over and over again. Here I am talking about it, right? right? Because right. I don't understand, and it's a smaller play. It's not a huge, it's a bagel shop. So right. meaning there's not seven layers in between the owner and the cashier at the front who has to say that. That right. owner and the owners are on site. Right. So why? And I guarantee you their POS provider has suggested or pitched or sent an email right. or whatever. Like I don't some of some of these guys have regional people in the area, but but at best you've gotten a solicitation right. about upgrading for twenty nine dollars a month or pay two hundred dollars and get our terminal. Because right. they also don't have it's not like they have eighty terminals. Oh, Corey, it's a million dollars to upgrade our system. That's not what we're talking about. Right. Well, and talking about sales mistakes, I if can't, you if you haven't I get, gotten I, I that. Just, if you haven't gotten that email and that phone call and that discussion, then somebody else is coming into your place and getting it right. and that provider's losing your business. And then I have to hear, <laughs> and, I, and I'm, I'm passionate, I, I get fiery about this because for 20 years I've listened to business owners talk right. about problems. Right. And tried many times successfully to solve many of those problems. Right. So it's so frustrating to me to see layups because there are companies with huge problems. Right. But you got some layups here that can increase customer convenience, get people to come back more, uh, uh, make them think positively about your brand. Right. Just just by increasing the convenience. Right. It's just silly season. All right, we're going to get out of here. Good thing um, it's only five. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> good thing we only had five. Yeah, good thing we only have five. <laughs> Join us next time for the 22. <laughs> I've got a 33 rules uh, uh, thing that, We'll probably need to do that in 
Over segments. Or I can move briskly through the 33 <laughs> if there is such a thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Briskly is relative. Well, listen, we've come to the end. Watch yourself. All right. <laughs> if you want to be seen next week. Okay. <laughs> no, no, well for done, sure. William. I'm going to be back. And LG007 is going to be back. William's going to be back. The whole team is going to be back. We thank you as always. Now he's now he's got more than enough sound right. effects, right? Um, William's been downloading sound effects on the show. But we want to thank you. Lana, I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to thank our audience and our viewers and, and all of the positive feedback. We're growing this thing. You know, we're only a handful of episodes out of the gate. We're, we're, we're getting positive feedback, and we're going to keep, you know, doing what we're doing um, to help. You know, if you, if you like the information that you're hearing, I encourage you, please share. I love the comments, but what would be so valuable to us is to share, repost some of our promotions about this. Let other people know who are in the business community, small business community. I mean, we're there's nothing we talked about here today that doesn't apply to major corporations as well as solopreneurs. Right. And that's generally how we like to theme this. We really like to cover that basis because the theme is grow. This is the Grow Business Podcast. So if you know someone, please share. Please get the word out um, so we can keep bringing this information that I think is important to your business. I want you to succeed. I want you to grow. Lon does. Everybody here within my organizations all want that. Um, Lon, I'll give you some, not the last word, but I'll give you a parting word. Well, and I, and I think be open to opportunity and give yourself, give you, define your North Star and use that as your filter for what's good, what, what's good to add to your business and what's not. But, you know, make it easier for your customers and your clients to do business with you. Yeah. 100%. We're going to leave it there. And that concludes today's Grow Business Podcast. I'm Corey Mosley with Lon Graham. Lon Graham, also known as LG007. Uh, we're thankful to have you with us here today, and we hope you will tune in next week for another episode, another edition, another podcast of the Grow Business Podcast with Corey Mosley. We'll see you next time.